Hi, in this video we're going to have a quick look at this Elegoo Super Starter Kit. So it's basically an Arduino clone uh, with some additional accessories. Now I'm a complete noob in terms of Arduino stuff, I've never actually used it, so this might be a nice little prompt um, for me to have a little play around with the development environment and some of the accessories that you can get. So inside the box uh, we're presented with a thank you card, um, a CD with uh, what looks like some tutorials along with some codes and libraries, and then we've got um, a series of accessories and sort of an Arduino clone board. So as I mentioned I've never really used Arduinos but uh, this looks pretty similar to what I've seen before. So you've got the Atmel 80 Mega 328P and then it looks like we've got a little chip here for dealing with the USB and then there's not really much else on the board so it looks like we've got some voltage regulators, uh, a crystal and uh, no other components on the other side. The PCB layout looks okay. I'm not sure if this is normal on uh, the other Arduino boards but you've got the hatched uh, copper layer so that you get copper balancing so that the board doesn't warp during manufacture uh, but yeah everything looks uh, absolutely in order here and it looks like you can program the 18 mega directly with the in circuit serial programming port just here. So we've also got a USB cable in there for connecting it to a PC. We've got a whole bunch of uh, little jumper cables which are great for breadboarding and it looks like we've got a little breadboard attachment for the board. So yeah we've got a little prototyping board here which you can solder onto but it also looks like you can stick this breadboard onto here if you want to use it as prototyping board and then that can pr plug into the development board just here so that's quite nice for uh, just testing things out. Um, and then we've got a little joystick and a little thumb controller for it so um, it can move in the axes and, and in any direction uh, like a game controller and it basically looks like it's got a pair of potentiometers for uh, determining the position so that's also quite nice. And then we've got a little board here which looks like it plugs in and allows you to power the board from 12 volts. Uh, it's got a USB-A connector, it's got a couple of voltage regulators and then it's also got a pin header marked 3.3 volts, 5 volts and ground. And we've got some components so we've got a 7 segment display and this is the multiplexed type so uh, you've got not got a huge number of pins on here you've just got a common for each digit and then the seven pins for each segment plus a decimal point. We've got an ultrasonic transmitter and an ultrasonic receiver so that's quite cool. Uh, it looks like it's already got the chipset on the back and then we've got a little board here with a ULN2003A on it and four LEDs and I think this is basically designed for driving a stepper motor this doesn't plug into the uh, board directly but you've got your inputs here which you can uh, tag onto. Then we've got some uh, nice 5mm LEDs, RGB LEDs and then a mix of uh, single colour LEDs. We've got a classic 16x2 character LCD. Then we've got this little stepper motor and this is what pairs with this stepper motor driver. Uh, learning about stepper motors is really useful, they are used a lot in industry so uh, Getting a bit of education on how to drive these properly is quite interesting. And then we've got a large prototyping board here as well. Let's see what this one, the quality is like. And yeah, so I think Julian would approve of this one. The, uh, the grip is quite tight, but it accepts uh, components quite nicely into any of the pads. So this looks like a, uh, a really nice quality breadboard. Uh, not one of the very cheap ones that you can get with the really poor fitting contacts. I did use to prototype pretty much all of my electronics on the prototyping board. In fact I've got it just here. This was basically my prototyping board probably since I was about 12 and it's had loads of projects on this. They're really really useful. Uh, I think this was from Rapid Electronics but I don't think they sell this particular one anymore. But uh, I do find prototype boards really nice, I just haven't used them that much in the past because PCBs are so cheap you can pretty much get PCBs in as prototypes. And then just a few other components are left in the box, so we've got one seven segment display, uh, a nice little relay which is quite uh, useful, uh, we've got a humidity sensor, we've got the infrared sensor uh, to work with the infrared remote control, uh, 10k potentiometer and then we've got a little adjustment knob to plug into the potentiometer so that you can adjust the value on it. So there we go that's quite a nice range of accessories if you're starting off learning how to program microcontrollers. Um, now when I first started programming microcontrollers it was with the PIC16F84A 
and things have come on a long way since then. But the way that I started uh, with programming is not by using C, but in fact in programming assembly and learning how to use every peripheral in the microcontroller. So I set myself a little project to learn how to use each peripheral, tested it out, initialized it, and then uh, you know made a project out of it. So I made something like an RGB color changer, uh, I made a clock with a seven segment display, and I made some timers and that kind of thing. And then uh, what used to be all the rage back in my day was to create a fan controller for your PC where you could change the, uh, the settings depending on how heavily you'd overclocked it. And I had one of these on the front of my PC uh, saying what all the fan values were. Um, but yeah, the, uh, the sort of development environment's changed quite a lot since then, and everyone uses libraries, but I do think it's really useful to understand how these devices work, because when you go into a career, it's very rare that you're just going to plonk on some libraries that you've learned. And it may be, in fact, that uh, because you're de uh, designing for medical or uh, automotive or something like that, you wouldn't be able to use third-party libraries anyway, so you'd have to program it from scratch. But anyway, um, what I might do is uh, do a little project with uh, something like this in the future um, and sort of get familiar with the Arduino environment because I do want to have a play about with the ESP8266 and the ESP32, which uses the same environment. So I may as well start off with uh, something quite simple. So I'll put a link in the description to the Amazon listing for this kit down below and also a link to the manufacturer uh, where you can buy it from their website directly. I do think it's quite a nice little kit to uh, get started off and the pricing isn't too bad. So hopefully you enjoyed this video and until next time, thanks for watching. <laughs>